What's up everybody? Russ with RWGResearch.com and QuantumGravityResearch.org. So check it out. I'm playing with the filament extruder and I just kind of wanted to give you guys an update. I have not updated you about the filament extruder in quite some long time. Uh, I haven't had the time that I want to work on this, but that's okay because I did do a few things that I definitely want to show you. Uh, so the first thing I want to show you before I forget is, uh, and I've got the camera set up here so they're kind of in the way. This is a DC motor, ran from the AC coming in off the line. Now here's the problem with that. Um, the line power fluctuates where I'm at currently, and when it fluctuates, the DC bus power fluctuates. And when that fluctuates, my motor speed changes. Um, so this may have been a bad choice to use as a motor unless you have a stable DC bus, which could be overcome by using either a... Uh, a DC power supply or uh, just using a regulate a line voltage regulator so that's one way to get around it now the other things that I did uh, currently I've made this jig right here that's being held together by magnets and it's a really big pain in the butt on how it's mounted here but this was just for purposes of trial and error and basically what I've got here is a pair of dial calipers and uh, digital calipers what I've did is I've, I've 3D printed this little bracket that you see right here. And this bracket, I'll show it to you better at the uh, end of this production run. <laughs> um, so basically there's two rollers on here and they just press fit right onto the end of the uh, calipers. And I've just got a tension spring back here. And as the filament rolls through here, it changes the um, diameter. And look how low it is right now. It'll jump up. Um, it does. The plastic does fluctuate quite a bit. Right now, it's like really low, almost to the point where I want to change it. So if I do that, I'm gonna just bump it a fraction. And it takes a while to get balanced out because the time, the diameter of the filament being pulled here changes. So if you get a bigger filament, it changes the speed ever so slightly, and it kind of has to balance itself out. But um, one other thing I did is I I wanted to add some weights on here to hold this. Uh, tension because the tension does not work very well um, if you just let it by itself so you have to put some sort of a weight on there to keep the tension and I tried using a pulley and it kept slipping off and getting bound it would get wrapped up in my spool um, so I just took some washers and these are uh, flat washers like machine washers where they're uh, they're not stamped they're actually flattened uh, from a stock and so they don't have sharp edges on them this is a stamped washer. You can see it has some sharp edges on it. These do not have those edges. They're like around. So I just put enough on there to keep the tension. You can see how they kind of just slide down. They, they don't ever get stuck. They can't really get stuck. Uh, they can't go vertical into the spool. So that's currently really where I'm at. Um, if you guys remember the temperature controller that's just inside here, it's just giving me a temperature, two temperature controller for my extruder. Um, again, I am extruding with a big nozzle and then pulling it to the right size. And you really do have to get the plastic melted to the right temperature. Too low and it wants to make little bunches and never really is smooth and too, too, um, too viscous, uh, too hot. And basically it stretches it out and that's not good either. So I'm supposed to be making uh, 1.75 millimeter plastic and I'm at 1.77 and it'll fluctuate. And the bigger uh, is probably better than the smaller. So undersized is probably worse because you don't get enough plastic through your nozzle. If it's slightly oversized, it's not a huge ordeal. Uh, the only thing about it when it's oversized is uh, if you go over two millimeters, it gets stuck in the tube. And when it gets stuck in the tube, this is what you have to deal with. This is a piece of tubing that has a piece of plastic in the end of it. And I cannot for the life of me get it out of there, so I just had to replace the tube. That was the piece of tubing right here. So luckily it got stuck here. But I did have a whole entire spool that I made. And uh, I did not watch it close enough, and I did not realize the line voltage would change. Which actually screwed up my... Um, screwed up my... Uh, DC bus power running to this motor. 
So um, yeah, I, I realigned these a long time ago, and I, I don't I don't really get any more grit and stuff. Um, I used to kind of grind the gears, and I had realigned it and oiled them up a little, and I don't get anything. So that problem is taken care of. I still have to make me a cover for this. That's temporary there. My sticks your finger in it. But yeah, um, actually I've made about uh, six or seven, eight, maybe nine spools now. And uh, had to make some more because the, like I said, the one spool I had was oversized. So I made that spool, got about halfway through. And uh, I was trying to get this jig set up to make it work better and I kept bumping this thing. And every time I'd bump this, it would change the, the diameter right here just a little, enough to where it would get stuck going through my jig here. So I screwed that sucker to the table and now it doesn't move. Now I don't have that issue, I can play with this. Because again, these are just sitting on magnets. Um, now normally you would move the slide and hold the, the piece here and it's the opposite right now. It's being actually held by this unit and it's allowing the um, other part to slide around. Or I should say this part's being moved around. That's why I've got it stuck to the to the other end here and again this is temporary and you can see I've got like a little piece of cut here and stuff stuff that I uh, that I, I'm not done with this jig yet and so I will be um, publishing these uh, these uh, prints these two pieces any any old I went to Harbor Freight on a deal and got these calipers for uh, eleven dollars so the only thing I had to do was loosen up the screws just a fraction to get it to slide a little bit smoother. But don't do it too much or else you'll lose your, uh, you'll lose your consistency. Because it'll rock left and right instead of slide and that'll screw you up too. So basically what you do is you, um, you basically take the filament out, you set it to zero, put it at zero, and then um, put your filament in there and then you're, you're measuring and it will constantly fluctuate around it just dropped off now you say it's shut off that's my only complaint you have to keep turning that thing back on luckily it holds its position from my understanding the uh, the battery uh, or the the LCD screen gets turned off but the the circuit inside still functioning so it's kind of a pain in the butt um, so a pair of uh, dial calipers would be okay but here's the thing um, right here I can do this without knocking it off okay right there is a data port see that and then there's no light up there but there's a there's a data port right there okay I'm gonna put this back on actually I'm just gonna leave it off until later today because I'll end up bumping it so what what's that data port do you can actually pull the data off these calipers so what I was going to do and may eventually do is actually use the data coming off the calipers running them into an Arduino and controlling this motor. Okay, so that's that's the plan eventually. I don't plan on doing that anytime soon, but that is how you can do that. You can actually pull the data right off here. And there's already Arduino programs that will read the data. You just got to grab the code, open source stuff, and uh, make your own version. So it'll just control the RPM, or basically the clock, of this motor right here, instead of my little potentiometer. See, I'm running a slightly low. I'll bump it up just a hair, it don't take much. Again, the, the oh, there it went up already. Now it's going to go oversized. Um, it does fluctuate, but I've never really had an issue unless it's too big. When it's too small, it'll kink and won't go through my printer. Uh, it'll break off and go out the side, and that's real fun. But I've only had that happen one or two times. Um, the one spool is just completely shot as far as it's too big. I'm just going to have to shred it up and put it back in here. So I currently have a... Oh, I did 3D print a lid. I didn't show you that. That's just a, a, a lid that fits on top of here. I've got me a, um, some uh, moisture absorbent hanging from the lid so I can absorb all the moisture in there. Uh, what was I going to tell you? Oh. One more thing that I'm going to be doing that I just haven't had time to do is include a spoil spool um, um, thing right here that goes back and forth that keeps this thing nice. I was going to do this a couple ways. I was going to take one of these motor controllers that I built and uh, basically there's a forward and reverse option into this little controller which is the same ones that are used on the 3D printer over there. And what I was going to do is use the two pair of limit switches 
and a slide. So put this on a on a uh, on a worm gear and just a little thing that goes back and forth and hits the uh, limit switch and it goes back and hits the limit switch and it just kind of keeps going back and forth. The other option is currently to keep this thing nice. I am just turning this like this and allowing the plastic to go to the left or go to the right and that works really well. So I could actually make a turntable and uh, connect a little like rubber band down to the turntable and actually let it oscillate left and right left and right. That would only work in my application so I want to try to find something that will work in like more than just my application so other people can use it. Now uh, um, um, Lyman, pronounce his name right, actually 3D printed his own little uh, um, device that goes back and forth and I may uh, I may try that. That actually looks very well done and it looks like it should work just fine so I might I might give that a shot. So that's my next my next upgrade for this is actually getting this oscillator. Um, again, I have to finish these files. Um, I'm going to make a few minor changes. The bearings that I'm using here are the standard bearings you um, will find on like a skateboard. So that standard common size that you can find around. Um, yeah, so I got some minor adjustment. See, I'm holding tolerance pretty well. Um, I'm actually slightly low, but man, that thing, I'll tell you what, it'll go up to 1.5 and it'll drop down to 1. you know. 6.5 and kind of fluctuate. It really doesn't like to stay very steady. But I've never, like I said, I've never had a real problem with that. So as long as the, the filament makes good uh, good prints, then I'm okay with that. I, uh, I've printed some uh, some bobbins here alright, for my VIC coils and I've, I've printed more of these. Just for fun, I wanted to try a few of these and uh, with the filament plastic that I made. And um, it's worked. So the size tolerance is definitely important, but you can get away with a little. Now, I have nylon here. I am going to be doing nylon. These are actually sent from one of my buddy. Uh, my buddy worked at a plastics place and they take samples of their stuff and then they throw it away after they check it and so these are some of the things that they were going to throw away um, there is a few pieces of ABS back here and I got some more ABS coming of this style and it may be the wrong style again the same thing I might have to go through the same problem I did last time but I'm excited about this nylon I do not know any specifications on this so it's useless there you go I will be doing nylon when I run out of this um, I'm going to make a bunch of spools and I'll be uh, using that. Now, these big giant spools up here, um, those are the three spools that I'm actually going to be making fit on my printer and my spooler right here. And the reason why is because I can run, uh, once I get everything set up and make sure everything's going to be good because I don't want to make a long run and then, uh, you know, get about that far right there and something malfunction. So that's a waste of a spool. So when I get things set up a little bit better and make sure things are more steady, which they're pretty good, you can run this for quite some time. You can make a couple of spools with no issues, but occasionally you'll have a hiccup. And uh, if you get it running smoothly and you get the size right, if you just leave it alone, it runs fine. So I just need to let it go. Um, but I will be using those, those much bigger spools up there and I'm gonna make a huge giant spool and literally I could run that thing for almost a month straight. If I ran the printer for a month straight, I wouldn't run out of plastic. So these spools last a lot longer than you think. Okay, well enough jibber jabber. Just wanted to give you an update of Russ's filament extruder and kind of where I'm at and where I plan on going. So I wanted to add something to measure. I wanted to add something to wind better, to make the layers better. And there are other options. I've seen uh, people using a servo and uh, just taking the servo arm and doing this. And that seems like it works good. Um, there's lots of options, but I'm just trying to find something ch cheap and easy. But yet, I'd love to hook up a, its own stepper motor and controller and really precisely wind it. Because the problem is, is, is if you connect it to this shaft, then it changes. Uh, the left and right changes as you make a, uh, as you make a layer. So if you hooked it up to the Arduino, which would also control this, and you could even make it control the temperature, 
uh, by doing that then you can actually set hey how many layers am I going and slow down the rate at which I wind and you could get a perfect wind but I'm not really concerned about a perfect wind um, because that right there is even excellent and that's just doing it by hand so no problem all right well Russ with rwgresearch.com and uh, it's pretty hot today but that's it that's all I got for you Peace and love to you all. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you guys are interested in more 3D printing filament, if you've never seen this and this is your first video, then go check out um, go check out my other work on my website, rwgresearch.com. All right. Peace and love to you all. Have a good day. Recycle, reduce, reuse. Ooh.